So if you're new to Linux and you want to stream or record YouTube videos similar to what I'm doing right now, these are going to be five essential programs that you are going to want to have. Let's jump into it. What's going on everybody? I am Rogue Ren. Welcome back to the channel. And hey, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe to see when I post new content. And if you ever need help with anything that I make content about, you can go ahead and join my Discord. We got a tech support channel and we will do our best to help you out. So when you're making content and you're using Linux, a lot of the tools that you need might be unfamiliar. Some of them might be familiar if you have already made content before, but there are some things that are gonna be different. And I'm gonna show you some of those programs and why you need them, what they do, and how to a uh, basic rough overview of how to use them. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our first program. And the first program we're going to show off today is Steam. Steam is a fantastic tool for getting all of your games in one place and where it's a great storefront to buy games on and it is natively supported on Linux. It's also got the Proton compatibility layer, which makes a ton of Windows only games work on Linux. I think according to Proton DB, there's somewhere around like 10,000 games or so that work with it, including like 70% of the top 100 games. In fact, really the only big games that don't work are the ones with anti-cheat and with the Steam Deck coming soon and Valve talking directly to anti-cheat makers, that might actually change. So it may be that all of the top games work on Linux. But anyway, to install this program, it is super easy to do. So there's a few different ways. If you are on an Ubuntu or a Debian based distribution, uh, the command in order to download it from the terminal will be as follows. So I'm going to have this over right. Oops, didn't mean to click that right here. Oops, here. And it's just sudo apt install steam. And that's it. You're gonna enter your password and that it's gonna say that it's already installed for me because it is. Um, and we don't have to worry about anything else. If you're on Arch Linux, the command will be slightly different, but the package will be the named the same thing. Or if you're on anything based on Arch like Manjaro, another really easy way to get it installed is from your app center. So the one on my distribution, which is Pop OS is called the Pop Shop. So let me pull that up really quick. All right, here we are. We have it right here. And when you open this up, you're just gonna to go to the little search bar. I haven't updated it that I'm gonna do after I finish recording and you just search Steam, and there it is. Now it's already installed for me, and you can choose between either the Debian or the Flatpak installation. I tend to stick with the Debian installation for Steam because I like to go through and add stuff to it manually, and I like to know the install location. I know the install location for the Debian installation. I don't off the top of my head know the Flatpak installation installs it in a slightly different place, but that's how you're going to go through. And this pop shop will actually be where the majority of things that you need will be installed from. Now, moving on, the second tool that you absolutely are going to need will be OBS Studio. This guy right here, if you don't know what OBS is, it is a free open source multi-platform screen recorder and just video overlay manager. It's a, it's a digital studio for all your overlays and things. It's what lets me have this cool looking background. It's what lets me chroma key out the green screen from my avatar. It's what lets me make all my fancy overlays, which you can see over on twitch.tv slash it's rogue ren, shameless plug. This is a fantastic tool and it's completely free. And seriously, if you do not have OBS, get OBS. Streamlabs OBS may look easier to use, but under the hood, they're the exact same program. And with OBS, you can get plugins to get more functionality out of them. Now, when you load it up, this is what OBS is going to look like. I have it sized a specific way, but you're going to have all these different scenes you can do with different sort of things. You can have scene collections. So say I want to do my Linux streams. This is where all of my stream stuff is with my overlays and my stingers. This is a lot of complicated stuff. You don't need to worry about any of this. <clears throat> you only need to worry about having this and being able to do the bare minimum uh, to start with. You can figure out the other stuff as you go. If you just want to get started with making videos or making streams, this is all you need to worry about is having a background image, which I have a video that's uh, loopable that I made, so it looks animated. I should actually re-export that as a WebM, not as an MP4, because it'll be a little bit lighter load, but that's something to do later. And then you can have like some programs. So I have my avatar programs right here. This one is for 3D. This one is for 2D. 
and then my microphone source. And you just, all you do to add stuff is just right click, add, and you can add all different sources. You can make multiple scenes, so I can have one for my desktop. And it'll all swap between. It looks very confusing to use, but it seriously is nowhere near as confusing as you think it is. It just looks that way. If you want to see a full on video about what I do to use OBS and how I set up all of my overlays and things like that, go ahead and leave a like to let me know you like this video and leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see. And I will do my best to try to make those videos. But with that, let's move on to the next program in our list of software. Now, the next program that is an absolute must have is GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation manipulation program. It's a weird name, I know, but it's a great piece of software. This is essentially Linux's version of Photoshop. It's a free open source and it does basically the same thing Photoshop does, albeit in slightly different ways. This is what I use to make every single thumbnail you see on my channel. It's what I've used to make every single overlay. It's what I use to make basically everything that I didn't commission that I made myself, I made in GIMP. It is a fantastic tool. I love this thing. I use it basically every day. And once you figure out where the options are, it's just as powerful as Photoshop. There might be a handful of things Photoshop can do a little bit better because Adobe has some patents on some stuff. But outside of those, the tools are almost identical. It's just your proficiency with using them. So for example, if I wanted to create a new document and I'll default it to 1920 by 1080p, I can do all the same stuff. I can draw, can make squiggly lines. I don't know why I'd need to do that. I can erase stuff. I can have transparencies if I add an alpha channel. So yeah, now I can like erase stuff. I can do clone stamps, which you won't be able to see until I draw on it. And you can do like clone stamps. See? You can do basically everything you would want to do in Photoshop. You can do like cage transformation. So if I want to select all of this and I want to uh, warp and manipulate it, I absolutely can. I don't know why I'd want to do this specifically, but I mean, it's something you can do. And you can just undo it all, turn it back to your blank canvas. But this is a tool that I use every single day. Test text. And it's a fantastic piece of software that I literally don't know what I would do without. And uh, also it has this 3D transformation tool that lets you do all the cool text transformations, which looks so cool that I do on almost every thumbnail. I love this software. This is seriously, I'm just gushing about it at this point. This is a tool that you absolutely must get. You must use this because if you want to make those good looking thumbnails and you don't want to pay the Adib the Adobe subscription on your Windows PC, or if you want to stick to Linux only and only use Linux for your stuff, this is your best option. Uh, another good alternative would be Krita, which you can download from Steam for like 10 bucks if you want to support the developers, or you can go to the website and download for free because again, it's free open source software. The $10 just helps develop them. If you can afford it, pay the 10 bucks for software. Um, you don't have to if you can't afford it, If you, it's totally fine, but if you can spare the money, Help these projects out because they do fantastic work. Credit is going to be a little bit more like Paint Tool Sci or um, for, uh, and if I forget the other professional painting software that like digital artists use, but it's going to be a lot more like those. It's definitely a tool that's geared more towards digital artists rather than people who would be doing graphic design or photo editing like GIMP is geared towards. I'm just more familiar with GIMP, even though I don't really do any like photography editing anymore. I did some a little bit of it in high school because I took a digital photography class, but I haven't really messed with it since. I've mainly used it for making graphics and stuff. I'm just more familiar with GIMP. But that's another good alternative. If you're more familiar with that software, use that software. If you can make it work for you, it doesn't matter what you use. If it gets the job done, these tools are just free software that let you do the same things. So I think that's all I want to say about this. And uh, let's move on to the next piece of software. Number four on this list is Caden Live. I say Caden Live because it doesn't have a paywall. If you're more familiar with DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve can work on Linux. There is a Linux native version. Absolutely use that if you're more familiar with DaVinci Resolve. I, however, am not. I've never actually used it. And Caden Live is completely free. It's a lot like Vegas Pro, if you ever used that. I used it back when it was called Sony Vegas um, before Sony sold it off. 
And that's actually the software I learned to edit in. So the fact that this one is so familiar and I've especially laid it out to be very similar, um, it's much easier for me. So we got our timeline, we got our preview, we've got our, what are these, volumes? Um, audio mixer that says it right there, I'm blind. And then you've got your project bin, you've got your effects and all that stuff. This is a fantastical video editor. It is completely free. It's also open source. Pretty much everything I'm going to list today is going to be open source with the exception of, I think, Steam. But Steam is free, so it's good enough. I say good enough, but honestly, Steam is the best place to buy games for Linux. So if, you, uh, if, if you're thinking about where to buy games, buy games on Steam uh, because you'll get Proton and it'll make it your life so much easier for getting games to work on Linux. But Caden Live is completely free and open source video editor that's very powerful. I mean, just look at all these effects and such. This, okay, well that one only had one. But like, look at all these, these are crazy. Those uh, bolded ones are the ones that I have saved under favorites, they're the ones I use regularly. But there's just so many effects. There's so many effects. Like this is utter insanity. Where else do you see a free piece of software have this much stuff installed by default? It's usually extra plugins you have to get and even then, some of the plugins are kind of shit, or it's some software you paid like $200 for, like I did with Vegas Pro, which I'm still upset about. I have Vegas Pro Edit 17 in Steam, or 16 Edit in Steam right now, and I cannot use it um, because I don't use Windows really anymore. Um, so if I wanted to edit my videos with that software, I'd have to move all my videos from my Linux PC to my Windows PC and then edit on that one, which my Windows PC is significantly weaker than my main Linux PC. It's just, it's a pain. But yes, Caden Live is the editor I recommend to most people who are starting to look into video editing because it's completely free. It's on every platform. It's on Windows, it's on Linux, it's on Mac. I think Mac, you have to do some finagling to get it to work because Mac is weird, uh, but it shouldn't be too difficult, I would assume. I assume they're gonna make it as easy to run as possible. I haven't actually looked too much into the Mac version. I've only looked into Windows and Linux, which you just you download a file and you're done. Caden Live is able to do basically any task you'd want to throw at it. You can chroma key out, you can do uh, gradients, you can do alphas, you can do uh, rotoscoping, you can do volume adjustment, you can do color correction. You can do mixing and mastering for the audio tracks. I don't think it's great at that, but you can do it. I would honestly, if you're going so in detail that you're mixing and mastering audio for your project, get a dedicated application for just the audio. Which segues into what we're gonna show you next, which uh, this last program may be a bit of a controversial take because of a lot of shit that's been going on with it lately. But uh, we're gonna move on to the fifth and final thing that I say every content creator should have. Now, the last tool that I think every person who's making content on Linux should have is Audacity, which I know is going to piss off a lot of people saying, oh, Audacity is spyware now, don't use it. Hear me out. Audacity version 2.4.2 or older. The reason for this is that this is before they added in their telemetry stuff that ended up violating the GPL license that they were under. Now. The telemetry itself is fine because it's optional, it's very minimal in what it collects, that's fine. But the fact that adding that makes it to where no one under 13 can legally use it, violates the license that it's under, which states that you can't restrict the access to the software. That's the main issue with it. Honestly, I think the telemetry is fine because of how minimal it is and the fact that it's entirely optional. I would personally turn it off, um, but I like that it's there. If I ever have um, a session that crashes, I can send off some data to the Audacity team and they can use it to fix it. That's fine. I'm totally down with that. It's not tracking my location. It's not tracking my mouse clicks. It doesn't have a key logger or anything like that. Like literally everything I just listed are all built into Windows, which is terrifying. <laughs> but um, 2 before 2 does not have that yet. Uh, I haven't updated mine in a little bit, uh, at least not to the latest version on the GitHub. I have only updated what is in the Ubuntu repository, which is currently 2.4.2. Audacity on its own is a great program. So let's say I start, I think it's already set up to use my um, stuff. You can see the text is a little weird, um, but I think if I start talking, yeah, you can see that it is recording my voice. It's a fantastic tool to record your audio if you want to have your audio in its own separate program. You can do a lot of really cool little effects. They're not the greatest effects, but they work well enough. You can do like some background noise removal that works okay. It's not fantastic, but it would be 
good enough for a YouTube video, I think personally. And yeah, that is uh, that is the last piece of software that I think every new content creator should have. Now, I'm not going to say this. There are some tools that I think that people should have, but I don't think they're necessary, at least for Linux users. Uh, the first of which I say is set up jack. Set up jack as your audio system instead of the default pulse audio, or honestly, even instead of Pipewire, I think Pipewire is still too new to use reliably. I really like it. I like where it's going. I will end up swapping to it at some point down the road once it's a little further developed. I just don't think it's quite ready for prime time as a daily driving or a daily driver uh, for your audio system. Now, the reason I'd say to set up jack uh, is for uh, the Ubuntu Studio. It works great. You can use this application called Carla, and I can literally control like digital inputs and such for all of my audio devices. This is fantastic. It's very confusing and I'll do a video about it later. I'm not going to worry about that in this video. That's just an example of stuff that I would recommend people get, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Most people will probably be able to get away with Pulse Audio just fine. For me though, Jack has those little bit of extra things that I need for my specific use case. And in that specific use case, there are a couple more programs that I think work better than the things I showed you. For example, Ardor instead of Audacity. Ardor has a lot more options. It's very confusing though. I'm still trying to learn it and losing. Um, and a couple other programs that I'll go into in a later video. And if you wanna see those things, let me know. I can do dedicated videos on OBS, a dedicated video on Jack. I can do a dedicated video on Caden Live if you want to see an in-depth how I edit. I don't know who would be interested in that one, but I can do it. But with that, we're going to jump on over for my closing statements. This sounds like some sort of school report. But those are my five essential tools that you need for content creation on Linux. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell to get notified when I upload new videos and leave a comment down below letting me know which of these programs are things that you've used that you're interested in using or that you didn't even think that you would need if you wanted to make content on Linux. Did any of these surprise you that they're on Linux? Did any of them not surprise you? Leave all that in the comments below. I will probably end up reading them even though every YouTuber I watch says don't read the comments. Uh, oops, I do it anyway. That's probably not healthy, but I do it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully we'll see you all in the Discord or over on my Twitch stream. You can find those both linked below and I will see you all next time. Peace out.